Hi, I'm Stu from HiveMind Automation and welcome back to The Hive. In this video, we're going to be going through an introduction to the thread communication protocol for smart homes and pulling on the thread of what it means for our smart homes. So while I roll the intro for more terrible jokes like that, take a moment to subscribe. And if you hit the bell icon to get notified when I release new videos each week, I'd really appreciate that too. While you're at it, if you like what I do here and you want to help to support the channel, there's a few different ways, including affiliate links in the video description to some of the home automation gadgets that I've reviewed in the past, and some other ways to support the channel as well, like signing up for NordVPN using my affiliate link, or supporting the channel directly through my Buy Me A Coffee link. With all of that out of the way, let's get started. Now, our smart homes are full of different communication methods to connect gadgets together and integrate them. There's Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, Z-Wave, Zigbee, regular old radio frequency and infrared, and the relatively new kit on the block and the topic of today's video, Thread. Thread was first announced back in 2014 and it's taken a little while to gain some traction. And some people suggest that it actually took Apple coming on board with the Thread group for that traction to be gained, but I digress. The promise of Thread is to provide faster and more reliable connections to your smart home accessories by using a low power, low latency mesh network built using proven and open standards like IPv6. The Thread group is made up a number of big players in the smart home like Apple, Google, Amazon, Lutron and SmartThings and some others that you might not have heard of, like D-Link, Eero, Quickset, Somfy, Silicon Labs, and Yale. Thread does operate in the 2.4 gigahertz wireless bands, similar to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi, and even Zigbee, but the core difference is that Thread does make use of IPv6 for its communications, which makes cross-connecting your Wi-Fi network and your Thread network much, much easier. For those cross connections, instead of a hub like with Zigbee and Z-Wave to connect to your Wi-Fi network, you make use of what's called a thread border router. But there's a chance that you might already have one in your home and it's also possible to have more than one thread border router in your thread network. In my smart home here, the Apple HomePod mini behind me and even the second generation Apple TV 4K and above are thread border routers. And so is the controller in the NanoLeaf shapes that I've reviewed in a previous video, along with other NanoLeaf light panel products like the Elements and Lines. There's a handful of others available too. Google's Nest Hub Max and second generation Nest Hub Smart Displays, the Amazon Echo fourth gen smart speaker and all Eero Wi-Fi 6 mesh routers are all thread border routers that support the latest version of thread 1.3.0 at the time of filming. And it would be a good bet that there's going to be more coming out in the not too distant future. Now, because Thread uses IPv6, integrating Thread into your smart home is much simpler for the hardware of that border router because there's no need for a translation layer to sit in between for the border router to then connect the communications between the Thread and your regular Wi-Fi networks. Not needing to translate the communications at the edge of the network is a very important piece of the puzzle for reducing the latency of thread. Being IP based should also help to promote interoperability and coexistence between smart gadgets from various manufacturers as well because of the ubiquitous nature of IP. 
There's already a number of manufacturers making the shift to thread and Acara announced earlier this year that they'll be introducing a new line of devices based on thread and they're expected to release a thread based door and window center. This is a Zigbee one uh, and also a thread based motion sensor as their first thread accessories and Theoretically, if a device's hardware supports the 802.15.4 wireless protocol, which is in fact the wireless protocol at the very root of Zigbee, theoretically with a firmware upgrade, it should be able to support the thread protocol, though it's extremely unclear how likely this will be because uh, I to be perfectly honest with you, I don't know how far away from 802.15.4 the Zigbee protocol has been taken. Now, Thread is already out in the wild in some accessories. This Nanoleaf Elements A19 Smart Globe that I reviewed in a past episode operates with both Bluetooth and Thread, and I can tell you that the Thread method has much better responsiveness. Uh, and I've even seen videos on the internet of people doing a side-by-side -side comparison between controlling this specific light bulb with Thread and with Bluetooth, and the latency is night and day difference. There's other accessories already out in the market too, like the Eve ecosystem of motion sensors, door and window sensors, etc. And I am considering getting my hands on some of those Eve accessories, but they are kind of expensive. If you want to see those accessories and my review, then let me know in the comments section down below and I'll get some on board. Now I mentioned before that Thread is a mesh network and similar to what Zigbee and Z-Wave do, each thread accessory that you add to your network can then also extend the thread network. And the advantage over Zigbee or Z-Wave is that it's also self-healing, which means that the network reconfigures itself even if one of the devices on the network fails or gets removed from service. So instead of the network falling apart and losing communications to half of your accessories, the network will adjust to the conditions and you should only lose communication with a failed or removed device. The low latency also means that thread products react much, much quicker. As I mentioned before, I've already seen that with this device and videos of that on the internet. And we'll certainly be making our own comparison video uh, between Bluetooth control and thread. So if you're interested in seeing that, be sure to get subscribed and keep an eye out for that one. The low power nature of thread, according to the spec, theoretically allows a device to run for several years on just two AA batteries, which should be really, really great. And that reduces the need to change batteries all the time. And it's also good news for renters and homeowners alike, potentially leading to more reliable and responsive wireless accessories, removing the need to run wires to everything that you want for, say, an alarm system. I will say that I've got some Zigbee accessories that I've never changed the battery in, and I've been using them for more than four years. These Akara motion sensors are absolutely amazing on their battery life. I do have some other Zigbee accessories, however, that I've had to change the batteries three or four times in the same time period. And these Acara temperature and humidity sensors are an example of that. That said, these are polling back to the base station fairly frequently, whereas these are only polling back to the base station when they either detect or stop detecting motion. So having seen that variability just in Zigbee, I do suspect there will still be a a bit of variability in thread. Now the thread protocol, again, according to the thread group website, theoretically supports more than 250 devices with multiple hops in the network. So unlike Wi-Fi, there's little danger of your network starting to fall apart when you get a lot of devices online. 
And honestly, I think that's one of the most attractive things about the Thread protocol and even other pro older protocols like Zigbee or Z-Wave. It's taking at least some of the smart home load off of your Wi-Fi network to make your Wi-Fi network more reliable. The inclusion of a thread-ready radio in the soon-to-be-available Home Assistant Yellow and the Home Assistant Sky Connect USB key also means that Thread should be a first-class citizen in Home Assistant very, very soon, and that's going to be very, very exciting. We will be taking a look at the Home Assistant Yellow when it does finally come in, and unfortunately, I ordered the PoE Plus version, so that's been delayed until the new year. So get subscribed and turn on notifications so you don't miss out when that video finally drops. So in summary, Thread should be a very big step in simplifying development for smart home gadget manufacturers with the added bonus of improved compatibility for consumers. And this should mean more and more devices that are adopting Thread as their communication protocol allows for better interconnectivity and interoperability between your smart home gadgets. As an open communication specification, Thread should also be cheaper for these manufacturers to adopt. And here's hoping that those manufacturers pass those cost savings on to consumers. Thread does feature very heavily in the new Matter Smart Home Initiative as well, and we'll be talking more about Matter in a future video. And I'd love to continue the conversation about Thread, so please drop a comment with your thoughts in the comments section down below. That is all we have for this video, and I do hope that it helped you in some way for your home automation journey. Be sure to comment down below with home automation ideas you'd like to see me cover in a future video. And don't forget to follow Hive Mind Automation on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up button down below to give it a like. And if you're not already subscribed, now is the time to think about changing that. While you're at it, if you hit the bell icon, you'll also receive a notification when I release new videos, and that's normally every week. If you're currently in the market for a VPN provider, I've placed an affiliate link for NordVPN in the video description as well. I chose to partner with NordVPN because they've got the best infrastructure of any of the VPN providers I've seen. They have a strict no logs policy and servers all over the planet. On top of that, they've got apps for just about every platform, whether it's desktop or mobile. So no matter what platform you're using, you can protect your sensitive personal information while you browse the web, even on unsecured Wi-Fi. So get a VPN today and use my link below to sign up for NordVPN. Lastly, if you like what I'm doing here and you want to help to support the channel, there is a buy me a coffee link in the video description as well. Any contributions that you make through Buy Me A Coffee are put towards making more and hopefully better content for you to enjoy. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Stu from Hive Mind Automation and I'm looking forward to seeing you next time. Bye for now.